welcome to my channel i'm so excited because i just found out something and i found out some studies and what you see here <laughs> is uh, the pottery from Erdebölle culture in Denmark uh, 7,000 years ago, something like 7,000 years ago. They really are beautiful. Wow. I mean, I think they are beautiful because I study these things and, 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 uh, and it's so interesting. Actually, you see this, this one, I mean, they formed it. They actually formed it by making rolling clay out in long sausages. <laughs> and they, and then they were, you know, forming them like this, 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 and then smoothing it out. And that the, the whole technology of this particular Erdebölle comes from Samara region on the Volga River. And I'm so excited because I was just going to tell you about pottery in Russia, which ended up being the most fantastic, beautiful uh, porcelain. It actually all started out there in the Far East 16,000 years ago. And then it traveled, I mean, the Amur River really is the border between Russia and China and the Amur River pottery and the China pottery was very, very early seen from our point of view. <laughs> and then it <clears throat> traveled through Russia to Baikal area which is near Kazakhstan and Mongolia, and it went up to the Volga area, and <clears throat> Samara, Samara, and then from there, that particular technology went to Scandinavia and to, and to Little Denmark. culture and look at that point there because I'm going to show you something afterwards that comes from all the way over at the Amor River. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to my welcome. I mean I, I've just 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 found this uh, of course, I knew about it, but I found the actual paper and the, and the picture. So welcome to my channel. And now we are going to start on what I was really going to talk about. Jesus, porcelain. Oh, 
I love it. <sighs> Look at this teapot up here. The teapot up here. And the beautiful flowers. And this, the tap. Look at the tap. It is actually, you, you know, you put water inside and then you, and you heat it up and, um, and then you tap out the water. Wow. And then you have the teapot here. Wow. <laughs> Look here. Da -da. Okay. I like it because it is, it is so folksy. Look at the, the, this is a teapot. I mean, honestly, I've never seen a teapot like that before. Uh, I, if it's not too expensive, <laughs> I want to buy one like that. I'm going to Moscow to look more into these things. And I'm going to the shop where they have this. And if they have some books about it, I will have that too. My name is Rick Renner. People are always saying, Brother Rick, what are all the things on the shelves behind you on your TV set? So today, I'm going to show you something interesting and tell you why it's on our set. And that is Russian gel. That's what this little table is full of. This is Russian gel. Gel is a Russian pottery which is made in the little city of Zhell, just outside the city of Moscow. And for several hundred years, the people who live there have been making Russian blue and white porcelain that is called Zhell, named after the city of Zhell. And it is such interesting porcelain. It's very whimsical. Every piece is designed to entertain. And when you come to the table in Russia for lunch or for dinner, and the Zhell is seated on the table, you don't know what's under all the gel. All these decorative items cover, it hides what is under each piece. For example, this is the top of a butter plate. Can you imagine your butter being served under this? Two people, a father and a son playing chess, but if you look at the bottom, this is to cover butter. Or how about this wonderful little item? It looks like a man and a wife riding through their sleigh in the middle of the winter, this is Russian gel, but you take the top off, this is for serving vegetables. Or if you'd like to have some tea at lunch, how would you like to be served your tea in a teapot made like this? Look at all the items on this teapot. This is Russian gel. It's so whimsical, it's so enjoyable. Or how about this porcelain version of a rust Russian nesting doll? That's what this is. It is absolutely intricate and beautiful. Look how beautiful this is. This is a Russian nesting doll, but in this case, it is in porcelain. And when you take the top off, it's another piece for serving mystery secret food. Every top, when removed, reveals food underneath. And when you come to the dinner table, it's like a treasure hunt to find what is going to be hidden underneath the gel. You know what's interesting about this gel? When they first make it and paint it, it's not blue. It's white and it's covered with gray. It's very ugly, to be honest. It's very dull. This particular nesting doll and all these pieces was not blue at all in the beginning. It was just gray, very dull, unattractive paint. But when you put these pieces into the fire, everything changes. You say, Brother Rick, what do you mean? Well, first of all, if it has a defect, the fire will expose the defect. When you look through the window into the kiln, into the oven, you can see the defects in every part. If you stopped the fire to retrieve the pieces from the fire, the defects would remain. But if you allow every piece to stay in the fire all the way to the end, the fire will remove every single defect. And when you put every piece into the kiln, it's gray, it's ugly, it's unattractive. But the fire is what brings out this beautiful, deep cobalt blue color. The fire adds richness and the fire adds color. You could say the fire removes the defects, the fire strengthens every piece, 
and the fire is what gives color to every single piece. Now I want to read to you a verse from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, where Peter writes, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire may be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We don't like to go through fire. There's all kinds of fires in life. But the truth is, when we go into fire, it usually reveals our defects. If we'll allow the fire to do its work, it will remove our defects. And when the fire is finished and we come out, we have new color. Wow. We have a new richness in our life, something that we can give to other people. So that's why I have Russian gel on my TV set. Here, this beautiful, beautiful candle labor. Ah, it just looks like what they have in Sweden, actually. And uh, here's a plate, beautiful flowers. You know, the, the technique of painting these flowers is like you have you have a flat brush and then you do like this, like this, like this. And then there's this one here, which I could not get up on my computer, but it is so beautiful. Look at this. This is a picture of some of the diesel porcelain on, 
auction by Christie in London. That is the Amor River. See, it starts somewhere here. And then it goes da 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 and that is where 16,000 years ago they actually started the pottery and it was simple as I've just shown you and they burned it this is how we think they burned it <laughs> And look at the tip here, the tip, just like the Erdebüll or Erdebüll is like this. And they burned it so that you could actually, you could hold liquid water or if they made beer, I'm sure they made some sort of alcohol there too. <laughs> And they could cook in them, they could ha carry food, carry water, whatever. So, that's how we think they, the fire was like uh, around 500, four, four to 600. I've already shown you. This is, um, this there is uh, Baikal. And they started 13,000 years ago. This is Kazakhstan. This is Mongolia. So it is quite down there at the border. And then we have this one here. Well, I'm showing you here. This is the Samara. Here's Samara. This is the Volga. This is uh Caspian Sea down here is Iran <laughs> this is Azov Sea this is the Black Sea and then the river the Samara Samara here and then it goes up here and then Moscow and then here we have um Scandinavia this is about globalization they, they they had globalization too in those days so this one here you can see if i can find out <laughs> this was the amor river area and it spread all over here it spread to the rest of siberia and here, this one here, you can see Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and uh, up here is Samara. So it spread this way, west. In fact, it spread all the way from China, Ewa, Siberia, Russia, and to us in uh, Scandinavia and Northern Germany. And that was like, actually 16,000. It's in China, they started 20,000. And then 16,000. And it reached Denmark in 7,000 Erdbühle. <clears throat> so it took 10,000 years to travel actually and why are we so behind actually in the west is because of the ice age you know and we were covered with ice up till I think uh, between 20 and 15 thousand years ago and then it started receding melting and all that and people came from South Europe up where first the animals and then the people came after them hunting <laughs> so that's what i wanted to tell you today and um, if you liked it press the like button subscribe if you haven't already done it and uh, if you have 
you know, if you know more about these things, uh, tell me. Uh, maybe I've studied it too. Maybe you know much more than me and you can add to it and so on and so forth. And if I have said something wrong, you can correct me. <laughs> so that's it for today. Bye-bye. <laughs>